Druggy mom won't let social services in her house. Subscribe to my new true crime channel, Mom's Murder Madness. We're still waiting on Miss Naranjo. She, uh, I know she was in another hearing this morning. We'll go ahead and get started, and she'll, I'm sure she'll join us shortly. She can give us her recommendation. So, um, <clears throat> I will call uh, Donnelly County case cause number DCPS-24-07857. Uh, this is an initial permanency hearing involving the Goldsmith child. Mr. Graff is with us for the department. Uh, Ms. Nelson's with us for CASA. Ms. Stevens is with us representing the father, Mr. Goldsmith, who's not with us. Ms. Stevens, were you expecting Mr. Goldsmith? Uh, Your Honor, I did send him the link, and I've sent him multiple emails, and he's basically cut off communication with me, so I don't think he's going to be here. Okay, all right, thank you. Ms. Pierce, the mother, is not with us, and she's not in the waiting room. I do have Peyton Sim in the waiting room. Mr. Graff, is that your witness? It is, Your Honor, if you could please admit her. Thank you. Okay, okay. I'll get her in. Again, we'll go ahead and get started, and I will watch for Ms. Naranjo. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, Ms. Sim is with us. Mr. Graff, is this your first witness? It is, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh-huh. Thank you. Ms. Sim, if you'd raise your right hand, you swear the testimony you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. All right. Thank you. For the record, this case was set for 10 o'clock. It's now 10.06. We will proceed in both the mother and father's absence. Uh, Mr. Graff, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Ms. Sims. Um, just a few questions for you. Um, at this Make, point, let me, excuse me, Mr. Graff. Sorry okay. to interrupt you. Mr. Ronho is joining us right now. So, oh, great. Okay. Apologies for being late, Judge. <laughs> That's all right. I'm a little you, late. <laughs> I know you had another hearing. We just now called Miss Sim as the first witness, and she's just now starting to testify. Thank you, Judge. You didn't uh -huh. her in, though. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, I did. Miss Sim? Yeah. Didn't I? Yeah, I did. <laughs> it's Friday. Apparently, I'm zoning out, but there it is. Yes. <laughs> Don't do that to me on a Friday. <laughs> All right, Mr. Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Sims, uh, what efforts have been made to locate and request service uh, of citation on all persons entitled to service? I believe they both have been um, served by appearance on 417 2024. Great. And have all uh, issues of paternity been resolved at this point in time? Yes. Now, it's true we did file uh, a request for an order amending the file to reflect a, a correct child's name and father's name. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And um, and it was just cor uh, correcting as to spelling, uh, as to the father, and uh, adding the child's middle name, correct? Yes. Okay. And at this time, can Braley safely be returned to either parent's home? No. Okay. Is uh, is it still contrary to her welfare to do yes. so? Okay. So there is a continuing need for placement and it is appropriate and in, in Braley's best interest at this time? Yes. Okay. Is she placed with a relative or a designated caregiver? No. Okay. Uh, but has she been placed in a developmentally and age appropriate manner? Um, excuse me, strike that. Um, have the parents or other family members identified any uh, potential placements um, if the child uh, obviously is unable to be placed with either parent at this time? The parents haven't identified any, but I did submit a diligent request to try and locate some. Okay. Um, but at this point in time, you've had no hits on that request? No. Okay. And um, are there any uh, plans or special services needed to meet Braley's special needs or circumstances? Not at this time. Okay. Uh, but she is, is developmentally, where is she at compared to at the beginning of the case? So she's doing a lot better. She is receiving ECI services though, because as of right now at her age, she should be able to eat food through the mouth and she's still on a G-tube. And so she receives services on swallowing motions, tongue motions, mouth motions, and how to properly do that. So she is behind, but she's uh -huh. getting. And, and she is gaining weight, correct? Yes. Okay, good. And the foster parents are able to, to meet those needs? Yes. Okay. 
Uh, regarding the parents, are uh, either of the parents compliant with the temporary orders and the service plan? And uh, what is the extent of, of if any, of, of their progress at this time? Yes. So um, we'll start with Ms. Pierce. Ms. Pierce has been in contact with the department. Her and I talk pretty often. She does attend her visits and her visits go very well. Um, as far as her drug screen goes, she has not drug screened at all for the case. Um, I am unable to go to her home. She has asked that I do not appear at her home. And so we meet at the courthouse. So I've been unable to look at the housing and determine if it's appropriate or not. Mom has found a job and she has been employed since August 2nd. And I do have the pay stubs. Mom has not started individual counseling. She has not started OSAR. Um, she did complete a parenting class. However, I did advise her that this parenting class would have to be approved by the department before completion. And she didn't get it approved before, but when she did complete it, I sent it to my supervisor and my supervisor did not approve of it because we were unable to verify the criteria needed for the completion of the course. And she has not started her psychosocial assessment. Okay. And so on that parenting class, uh, you haven't been able to get in and evaluate the, uh, the syllabus or what is covered in that, in that class. Is that right? Not at this time. No. Okay. So you, you would have been open to, to giving credit for it, but you haven't received enough information. Is that fair to say? Yes. Okay. But, uh, as far as any of the other court ordered services, there's been no compliance at this point in time. Correct. Okay. And then what about uh, Mr. Goldsmith? Yes. So um, I tried to contact Mr. Goldsmith on several occasions um, with no response. And I think in August, I realized that his phone was turned off because my, my, there was no deliverance on my trying to communicate with him. So I got in contact with his attorney and she emailed him and then I was able to email him and I finally was able to communicate with him. Um, he has not started services at this time. Um, I did explain the FSNA or the FPOS to him again and kind of went through it briefly on the email. This was the very end of last month and I would like to be able to meet with him in person and really sit down with him and go over it and see if he does have any additional questions. Cause I don't think he understands really what's going on and what he needs to do and how to do it. Okay. Has he visited? So he had a visit on June 21st. He had a visit on June 28th. He canceled on July 12th, canceled July 19th, canceled July 26th, canceled August 2nd. And canceled August 9th, and then our counseling center that holds these meetings um, ended their contract because of the cancellations. Now, when I did contact Mr. Goldsmith at the end of last month, he did let me know that it was a transport problem. And so I asked him to identify days and times that would work for him to see if we can get him transport to and from visits as well as a child, but I have not heard back from him on this yet. Okay. And did you attempt to contact him at the good email address that had been working? Yes, I, I just responded to the email thread that we had already started. Okay. Um, is there a need for any additional services uh, for either parent at this point in time? Not at this time. Okay, so you would ask the court to just maintain the current service plan? Yes. Okay. Um, is the, at this point in time, do you have a likely date by which Braley could be returned home, adopted, or placed in a permanent managing conservatorship? As in like, oh, or like reunification. It does take six months. We would like to see six months of stable housing, stable employment, drug-free. Um, so. Okay. And um, have you identified a current permanency plan? Yes, reunification concurrent with related adoption conservatorship. Okay. Um, have you uh, made reasonable efforts to finalize that plan, um, including the concurrent permanency goals, uh, to the best of your ability? 
Yes. Okay. Uh, I think that's all I have. I passed the witness. Thank you, Ms. Sims. All right, thank you. Uh, Ms. Stevens? When was the last time you had contact with my client, the father? It was, let me look. I put you on the email. Yeah, so it was last week? The last, e yeah, it's the last time I emailed you and him together. Have you heard from him since then? I have not. Okay, pass the witness. All right, uh, Ms. Naranjo. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Sims, is it fair to say that both parents have may have completed little to no services at this point? At this time, yes. And have either parents complied with any drug screens? No. And for Ms. Pierce, she's continued to deny you access to her residence. Is that correct? At this time, yes. I'll pass the witness. All right. Anyone have any further questions for Ms. Sims? No, All right, then, uh, Mr. Graff, any other witnesses? No other witnesses at this time, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Stevens, any witnesses? No. All right, Ms. Naranjo, witnesses? No witnesses, Your Honor. All right, Ms. No. Naranjo, recommendations? Your Honor, Braley is doing very well in placement. I do recommend that both parents' visitations be suspended until they begin initiating services and comply with doing a drug screen, as well as I would ask that Ms. Pierce not have visitation until she allows the department to have access to her residence. Okay. Um, Ms. Nelson, Costa, you have anything to add? Can you re-ask for my recommendation? I'm sorry. I think she. I think she's frozen. I, you said something and I didn't hear you. Uh, is this you, Miss Nelson? Is that you talking? I'm not sure she's frozen and and muted. Okay, looks like she dropped off. We'll let her come back real quick. And I dropped off for a second there as well, Your Honor, just for the record. Okay. Can you hear us now, Ms. Nelson? No. I can hear you. Can you hear me? No, you're breaking up real bad. when I stop the video? Uh, now I can hear you. Can you hear us? Okay. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, um, Ms. Nelson, I any? I, we agree with Mr. Ronho that um, uh, parents visitation. Okay, I'm just going to leave. Service plan. Okay. Give me just a second. All right, then, uh, I will continue the department's temporary managing conservator, continue the current placement. Uh, I will order that both parents' visitation be suspended until uh, each parent begins working their services as contained in their service plan, and also be suspended until each provides a negative hair strand and UA drug screen. And as far as Ms. Pierce is concerned, hers will continue to be suspended until she allows the department and or St. Francis uh, access to view her residence for safety. All right. Uh, looks like, give me just a second here. It looks like uh, our next permanency hearing will be on December 18th, 2024. That will be by Zoom like today's hearing, so parties and attorneys can go on the court's online docket a day or two in advance of December 18th to see exactly what time we'll have that hearing. All right. That was our only hearing for this morning, so... Your Honor, before, I'm sorry, Your Honor, before we sign off, um, is the court ruling on the request to amend the file to re, uh, reflect the name changes? Oh, sure. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. you uh -huh. Okay.
We'll stand in recess. Everybody have a good weekend. You too, Judge. Thank you.